Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Once again, the holiday season is upon us. Everybody's out shopping for gifts. Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals have already started popping up here and there. And you may be watching this because you are wondering what to buy for the board game enthusiast in your life. We're here to help. We do a lot of reviews and many of the things that we're going to recommend in today's list you will be able to find full in-depth reviews of elsewhere on our channel. But this is the rundown to sum it all up if you really need to know what to buy and for whom it should be purchased. We're going to split that up into a few different categories, primarily games for the casual player, uh, medium weight games, and then advanced games. So it's up to you to determine how to choose which games to buy for which people, but hopefully we can help Help you get started in the right place with some recommendations. And of course, we do this every year, so this is going to really focus on games that came out this year in 2020. There are some good things that came out this year. Now, we're going to start off with the casual section. This doesn't mean simple as much as it's going to be a lot easier to get more people to the table for these games. And one of the easiest ways to get people to the table is with properties that already exist. Uh, many of these will be attached to maybe some movie titles, such as Back to the Future. There are actually two Back to the Future games that came out, Dice Through Time and Back in Time. Both of these games, of course, involve the characters from the Back to the Movie franchise, and they are fully cooperative, meaning that you won't be playing against each other, you'll be working together, as you can probably guess, to fix the time stream. You'll, of course, take different characters depending on which game you play and each have their own mechanics in order to try to capture the feeling of those movies. Everybody loves the Back to the Future movies, so no one will be disappointed with either of those. And another movie everybody loves is The Princess Bride, another 80s classic. And there's a new game based on that one, the Princess Bride Adventure Book game. This is, of course, a good one for the Princess Bride fan in your life. It's also cooperative, so all players are playing together, and it has this storybook component you play on these different maps that unfold in a book. It's very thematic, it's very, very reminiscent of the original film, uh, something that will be easy for families or kids to play together. Uh, definitely a good choice, obviously, if you're interested in this or if you're looking for something that maybe is just a, a nice souvenir or it'll look nice on your shelf somewhere. Even if you, you could take that book out and display it, put it on your coffee table <laughs> if you want to, if you're not interested in the gaming aspect of it. What's also cool about it is it's actually going to be part of a series of these book collections. So if you've got someone who's a bit more of a collector in your life, they're going to enjoy collecting all the different games that would fall under this property. Now, a very popular game is Splendor. This is an engine building game when you're collecting these gems in order to buy more pieces to be able to get more gems until you are the one who is victorious at the end. They have released a new version of it with the Marvel skin, Marvel Splendor, with if you can guess from my previous explanation with gems, it's going to involve the Infinity Stones. Now, gameplay is mostly similar, but you will need a gem of each color at the end to trigger the end game. So it's got a bit more of a thematic twist in order for you to truly be the most powerful Marvel character of them all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, if you're if you're missing all the Marvel movies that have not come out this year, maybe this will be something to uh, tide over the Marvel fan in your life. But we'll have more Marvel stuff coming up later in the episode as well. Uh, but next, let's move on to something that is not based on a property. Calico is a game that's been lighting up the hot lists this year. This has got an adorable cat on the cover. So obviously, if someone is a fan of cats, has a cat, maybe they have a cat that looks like the cat on this game's box. This is a good one for them. The actual premise of the game is that you're putting together quilts with various tiles, and depending on which tiles they are, you may attract different cats to come and sit on your quilt, which is very nice, but uh, at its core, you'll find this to be uh, more of an abstract, uh, fairly strategic tile placement game that might be easy to learn, but there's some depth there, and, uh, you know, everybody's been raving about it, and if nothing else, the art is pretty beautiful. The next one is a little bit of a cheat because it's multiple games, but I think it's fair. If you don't know, there is an award known as the Spiel des Jahres. It's pretty much given out each year to games that in Germany are uh, considered to be either very good for families or if it's a little more complicated, there's the Kinderspiel. Honestly, 
Anything that gets nominated, you should take a look at. We're gonna quickly mention three of them here. There's The Crew, which is a cooperative trick-taking game. Really fun and has missions that you have to all work together that get progressively harder. We have My City, which is actually a legacy game, which is pretty impressive to make this list. This is a game when you have to play the game and once you finish it, depending on how the game ends, certain people are gonna get stickers that will permanently change their board, meaning that they're gonna have a different advantage or disadvantage for future game rounds. And then we've got Pictures, which actually won the Spiel des Jahres for this year. It's a game all about trying to communicate to people about the picture you have, but you can only communicate in very specific ways, whether it be like shoelaces or rocks. It's really trying to think outside the box to get your message across. Yeah, so a pretty wide variety of, of genres there, but they win those awards or are nominated for them usually for a reason. And we haven't had the chance to play all of them, but from what I've played, I really enjoyed our time with them. Uh, our last game for the casual category on this list is a very different one indeed. It's a, actually a game system called Blinks. These are a series of electronic pieces. You will buy six of them in a set. Each one has its own game on it, and they communicate with each other. They're magnetic. They will learn and unlearn the games that you teach, and they light up and change color in different ways to allow for all kinds of different games. Now, this is uh, somewhat more on the expensive side for games. One set of these goes for $99. I think you have to get it straight from the official retailer site. You may not find it on your Amazon or at your toy store or what have you. Uh, but it's a really unique idea, and if there's someone you know who is kind of uh, into tech stuff, maybe even just as much or more so than the board game side of things, uh, this is a cool toy-like idea that they might be able to get into. It's definitely one that's going to target more of the people who really love to upgrade and see the newest technology. And if they're a coder, they can actually try to make their own games, which is definitely a plus. Our next section is medium. This is a little bit more challenging. Obviously, many of these could cross over back and forth, but we need to separate this somehow. We're going to start off actually with returning to Marvel, but this time Marvel Villainous. The Villainous line is actually based on Disney villains. They have had some expansions, but Marvel Villainous is its own standalone. Marvel Villainous, because Marvel is one universe, you are all sort of competing with each other and have a shared deck of heroes to deal with. This changes up some of the mechanics and also has a lot more player interaction. It's really fun to play, and if you are, one, a fan of the Marvel movies, or two, you enjoyed the Villainous line, this is a great addition because it shakes some things up. Yeah, Villainous was a, a pretty great uh, entry-level uh, thematic game based on a property a lot of people are familiar with that can introduce new players but also has enough rule sets and uh, strategy involved that more advanced players can enjoy it as well. So it's it's medium on our list. Uh, now, if you have someone who is a fan of World of Warcraft in your life, then you might want to take a look at Small World of Warcraft. The original Small World is a fantasy game, an area control game where you are sending units out into a map, different factions, elves, dwarves, what have you, and trying to take over different areas while fighting other players off. This is the same premise, a very similar gameplay, but with characters and races from the World of Warcraft. So it's totally standalone, you don't need any other set to be able to play, but if there's someone who's addicted to that World of Warcraft thing, or maybe they just were at one point, and this will be nostalgic for them, this would probably make a good gift. And while most mechanic mechanics follow what is in Small World, they have a new mode just for those World of Warcraft fans where you can have the Horde versus the Alliance. Now, our next game does not use another property, though I think the name has been used for a lot of things, and that's the search for Planet X. You're going to be moving around the sky, gaining clues and trying to guess which section has asteroids, has clouds, nothing until you're able to narrow down and find Planet X. Depending on how well you're able to guess about how the layout the app has set up for you, you're gonna get more points, and whoever can guess the, correctly the most wins. Yeah, I'm a big fan of these types of games with deduction, so if, you, if you're into that kind of puzzle solving thing and trying to find secrets or hide things from other players, uh, this is a, a really neat one that'll, that'll make your brain think. But if you're more of the kind of person who wants to go out into space to shoot aliens, then you'll probably want to look at Aliens Bug Hunt. This is based 
on Aliens, the 80s movie sequel to Alien. You're probably familiar with it. Uh, it's another cooperative game. Uh, all players are going into this complex from the movie and trying to take on as many aliens as they can. The aliens are represented by dice. You'll be rolling them to attack them. It's a relatively straightforward game uh, that doesn't have too much complications in terms of the rules. And because you are working together, that makes it a little bit easier. But if you like that flavor, you like the flair of the alien films, this one captures that suspense and that action in a unique way. It's got some cool mechanics mechanics, allowing you to explore base and trying to work together and dealing with more of the horde style of the aliens that we see in the Aliens movie versus the one hiding and sneaking around the base and definitely one to check out if you are a fan of the movies. Now, we're going to end off this section with Fort. Fort is from the same people who brought you Root, and in this game, you all play as kids trying to build the coolest fort. In order to do so, you're going to get the neighborhood kids to come and help you, but depending on which kids you use, they may go to other players if they're able to uh, brag them or bribe them to join them. This is a really interesting, fun deck building game. And if you like that kind of genre at all, it's one to check out because it swaps things around because there's going to be a lot more of card switching and you have to decide which cards are worth playing because those are usually the ones then your opponents are going to be able to take. Yeah, it's a really unique one. Another one that has a great amount of depth to it, but it's just a small deck of cards in a small box, very simple to set up, and a really appealing theme and artwork that people are going to want to play. Now, our last category, well, our second to last category, there's a surprise category afterwards, uh, are the advanced games. These are the games that you want to get for the person that you know is a huge board game player. They're going to be able to pour over this rule book and understand it and teach it to people. And we're going to start start with maybe the biggest release of the year, certainly one of them, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Pandemic Legacy skyrocketed to the top of everybody's lists when it first came out. Since then, there has been a Season 2, and now Season Zero is the newest entry in this series. It is a prequel, and it is totally standalone, so if you know someone is a fan of the other games, or if you don't think they've had any of them, this is still okay. You can still buy them this to start with. Uh, you are trying to uh, take out Cold War agents uh, in in the, in the Cold War era, whereas normally you are preventing disease and pandemic, this one has a twist on it. And like the other legacy games, things are going to change as you go. The board will change. Stickers will be added. Uh, players' characters may be injured or killed as the game goes on. Uh, another cooperative game, but very intense and very, very hot. The Pandemic Legacy series has definitely been very hot, and it's one a lot of gamers talk about. It's only been rivaled by the likes of Gloomhaven. This has been a game that everyone has talked about. It's a huge game with a giant campaign. For some people who maybe want a, don't want to spend as much money and aren't sure if they're going to like it, they made Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. This is a smaller prequel sort of story to the Gloomhaven story where you play as a group of mercenaries known as the Jaws of the Lion. It is designed so it's one much smaller, but also still teaches you and gets you through all the mechanics that you would see in Gloomhaven, and it's probably going to be a lot easier to find. Yeah, it's uh, all the fun and mechanics of Gloomhaven uh, without well, still being able to fit it actually underneath a tree or what have you. <laughs> <laughs> much, much easier to wrap, let's put it that way. Uh, so definitely look at that one. If you want something uh, or you know someone who wants something more narrative based uh, with an even stronger story and a focus on characters and dialogue, you might want to take a look at Forgotten Waters, which is a game from Plaid Hat Games in which you are pirates on a pirate ship sailing the seas. This one uses a web-based app, so as you play, you're going to be hearing stories read to you uh, via this app with voice acting and music and sound effects and you are exploring a map together. It is cooperative, although you can a little bit backstab each other here and there if you want to. Uh, there are multiple scenarios included, and you can get from one end to the other experiencing some really unique and humorous stories. Forgotten Waters is really a great choice, especially now, because they actually designed the game after all that's been happening, so you can play it on camera, everyone in their own home. All you need is the one person who owns the game to put their camera on the board so you can see where the ship is, and the rest is through a website and still hear that great voice acting. If you're looking though for something maybe a little different, then maybe you should be taking a look at Pendulum. This is a game where 
you are actually using real sand timers to trigger action. So everyone's gonna be placing their workers on the board, but certain actions don't trigger until the sand timer is put on the space and workers cannot be removed until the sand timer is not on their space. So it becomes this interesting, hectic worker placement of trying to position your people at the right place at the right time. And then once all the sand timers are run out, how do you spend your resources correctly? Definitely a new experience to those who are used to maybe playing a lot of different board games. Yeah, this comes from the same publisher as really big games like Scythe and Wingspan. So uh, definitely one that a lot of gamers are talking about worth looking into. Uh, now, we got another game based on a movie that was supposed to come out this year. So if there's someone you know that is disappointed they won't get to watch the new Dune film, they can try to pick up Dune Imperium. This is a deck building and worker placement game based on the books and the film. In fact, it has original art that is really more based on the new actors playing the characters in the film. So uh, you can kind of piece together what you think maybe that movie will be like if and when we get to watch it. But this is a sci-fi setting. You're trying to, you know, you have various factions vying for control on the desert planet of Arrakis. Uh, another good one for people who are fans of this series. And I would probably say one of the lighter ones in as far as the advanced section of this list goes uh, compared to the other ones, I think, which are a little bit more complicated. It's definitely one I want to check out as well as there is the previous Doom game is just as far as I know, really the only other big time Dune has hit the board game uh, landscape, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got an interesting deck builder that is the Ruins of Arnak. In this game, you all play as archaeologists who have found this mysterious land of Arnak, which of course you're going to search in in order to explore, dig up areas, increase your deck with not only cards for you to purchase, but for artifacts for you to explore and discover. And hopefully, by the end of the fifth round, you have discovered the temple and are also the archaeologist with the most points. Yeah, uh, this is from Czech Games, who always put out some really cool, interesting ones. So if you're looking for something uh, that has some depth and some strategy to it, uh, as well as a cool jungle exploration, uh, kind of Indiana Jones-esque theme, take a look at Lost Ruins of Arnak. And now we have one final category special for 2020. Uh, a lot of us these days are stuck at home or trying to spend more time at home, uh, either by yourself or maybe just with one or two other players at your disposal. So we have a category, a selection of games that are really ideal for one or two people who are stuck in the same place. The first one we're gonna highlight is called Warp's Edge. And this is a solo only game. Uh, you are in a spaceship trying to fight off a horrible alien mothership, but at the end of each section of the game, each round, you warp back. You kind of are, are stuck in like a wormhole, uh, and you will get to refill your engines and things like that, while the enemies do as well. So you are uh, drawing random discs out of a bag, trying to get better lasers and everything to take them on. Uh, a really unique solo game with uh, if anyone who likes bag building or deck building elements, this is one you might want to check out for them. That isn't the only solo sci-fi game we have for you. Under Falling Skies is a game in which aliens have come to invade Earth and you're gonna try to fight them off in underground bunkers. This is a solo game, like I said, where you're gonna play through multiple missions in a campaign in order to try to fight off the alien menace. This uses dice placement in order for you to choose actions, but those actions also decide which ships are coming to get closer. You're gonna work, do your best to fight off these ships until the mothership appears and hopefully, you'll be able to defeat that as well. I've been really eager to start playing this one and a good one again if you're stuck at home because it's got that campaign in it so it'll last you a little bit longer. Another one that'll last you a good amount of time is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, the new set for that series, The Baker Street Irregulars. This is a storytelling cooperative game uh, wherein you take on the role of the irregulars working for Sherlock Holmes, trying to solve mysteries in London. You will be going around to different locations, reading story passages as you go, and trying to decide as a group what happened in each mystery. This is a perfect one for either one player or just two or three players at home. You'll take notes together, you'll have conversations, try to deduce what's going on, who the suspects are. It's very, very accessible, very easy to play. Even though you are trying to compete with Sherlock Holmes and get a, a decent score or 
possibly beat them if you're good enough. I just feel like it's one of those games where you're there for the journey as much, if not more so, than the destination. The next one is a really fun one, whether it's just you and one other person or maybe with a group of people, and that is the Unmatched series. Strictly two new sets have come out, Unmatched, Cobble, and Fog, as well as the Jurassic Park set. You can probably guess what Jurassic Park has, characters from the movie. You can either play as the raptors and try to fight off the humans who have hunters and are going to be setting up traps. Meanwhile, Cobble and Fog has a bit more of a gothic style with Sherlock Holmes, Dracula, the Invisible Man, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So if you want the raptors to take on Dracula, you can go do that. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one because, again, it has a lot of uh, different sets that are all standalone, so you can kind of mix and match based on which themes or settings you think someone would like most. Next up, we have a strictly two-player recommendation, Fox in the Forest Duet. Uh, this is a cooperative trick-taking game in which you are trying to guide your cards, your, your foxes and what have you, uh, and move a piece on a map back and forth. And depending on who wins which trick and with which cards, that determines how this piece will move back and forth across your little board. It's a very, very small game. This is the successor to Fox in the Forest, which is the same idea, but competitive. Both are nice, very small, simple two-player games. And we're going to round off with one that you probably already know about, judging by their sale numbers, and that's, well, regular puzzles. It's a really easy one for you to just bring to the table and everyone work together to build a puzzle. And of course, depending on the number of pieces, you can easily uh, increase or decrease the difficulty for your player group, so to speak. Yeah, there are tons of puzzles to look for out there. I know Mondo has a lot of really cool ones based off of movie posters or original art from different uh, franchises. So I may be looking to things like that if there are people who are fans of specific things. And we'll also finish off by recommending, as always, it's a good idea to take a look, if you can, figure out what the person you're buying games for has in their life already, what kinds of games do they like, and see what accessories might match what they have. Uh, sleeves are always a good idea, uh, maybe a, an organizer box you can look up from a company like Broken Token for specific games, anything like that that might complement their games, or for things that are constantly expanding like CCGs or LCGs, additional packs in those card game categories uh, might be good as well. There's always so much for your gamer in your life. <laughs> yeah, or for you, if maybe you're using this video to try to decide what you should ask for or put on your wish list for this year. Another cool thing for the get is maybe some clothing, like Roll for Crit brand clothing. We now have a merch store with a lot of cool shirts as well as mugs and other fun goodies. <laughs> There you go. So if you're looking for that, you can find the links uh, below us, below this YouTube video. Uh, if there's a, someone who's specifically a fan of Roll for Crit, which uh, they should be, or you should just shut them out of your <laughs> life completely. Let us know in those comments down below. Are you planning on purchasing or asking for any of the things we mentioned in this list? Or is there something totally different that you're hoping to find as a present that we didn't get to? Talk to us down there and hopefully you'll have a happy holidays. Either way, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this is Roll for Crit. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and support us on Patreon. That would make us happy. Maybe the next video is the one where Jonathan does a silly dance. <laughs>